Abe, what are you most looking forward to? I think I'm looking forward to going to the Vatican. Yeah, I haven't been there before. And that's pretty much a bit of a thrill. I'm looking forward to the Vatican too. Yeah. Yeah. The Vatican too? We've already had Vatican too. We've had Vatican too. We've already had that one. Yeah. Have, you just... been, have you been to Italy before? No. Oh, no, no, no. no. You've been to Rome, I've been, been to Spain. Europe. Yeah, yeah, been, been to Spain. Spain. But you haven't been to Europe at all. No, just America's. North America. and South. No, just America. Oh. <laughs> On a serious note, I am looking forward to seeing the Saints. Pier Giorgio, I think Pier Giorgio's day in the tomb, well, in his nearest body, would be great. And, and then St. Francis. And then the America or Luciano. Is it Luciano? Lanciano. 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 And um, the truffle hunting. Right. Yeah. Father Paul, what are you most looking forward to? I'm most looking forward to seeing, uh, to visiting Pier Giorgio's body. Yes. I think that was the real reason why I wanted to organise this pilgrimage, so to be in his presence. And also looking forward to the Scarvi, the necropolis in Rome, to visit St Peter's tomb. I've been to Rome three times already and never been able to do that, so I'm really so pleased that we've been able to organise yeah. that this time. Nathan, what about you, mate? How about you give me that? Oh, I'll ask you a good question. Is that a big one? Uh, uh, Costo, what's your um? What are you looking forward to the most about this pilgrimage? I, um, I think the very very first day seeing the tomb of Blessed Pier Georgia. I think that's going to be really really special, and seeing his sight, just going where he went, and you know, sort of trying to yeah, get a a bit of inspiration from him and then obviously I think Rome will be really great as well. Well, it was an immensely exciting experience and for me very moving as we uh, were able to, to kneel in front of the place where Pier Giorgio's body lies. And it was also a sense that we brought all of Frasati Australia with us, all the people connected with us and all our intentions and hopes for Frasati Australia. We brought it to the, to the source, so to speak, to where Pier Giorgio is. Um, and at the same time too, it was interesting that his body is there, but if you like, his spirit is not contained where his body is. If we were actually able to bring part of his spirit all the way from Australia on the other side of the world to here where he lived his life. So um, it, I think it was a very complex experience and something that I'll uh, reflect upon and come to appreciate a little more as we continue on the journey to Biela and Europa and, uh, and to Polone. Oh, definitely seeing Blessed Pier Giorgio's tomb and being able to spend some spend some time there. It's um, seemed very surreal as someone you really look up to and have a devotion for and have had a great love for Pier Giorgio's witness and, and his testimony and I, know, I didn't really know what to to expect and then just being here is just, there's definitely a real I don't know, a, a real presence and I'm not sure if that's something I don't know, that's just because it's such a significant event for me personally, but I really appreciate the time to be able to pray and ask for his intercession and I was, I was going to there, going there to pray a rosary just to yeah, seek, ask for Pier, for Pier Giorgio's guidance, but as soon as I knelt down there I just you know, felt like asking him to pray with me rather than 
then for me and I've uh, sort of raised with Blessed Peer Georgia and just offered up my intentions and just asked for the courage to follow his, his great example, his great witness of Christ. So uh, definitely the tomb of Blessed Peer Georgia is going to be a highlight for me today and at the cathedral probably be the highlight of the whole trip but mm. yeah, you never know what's uh, around the corner. I think uh, pretty significant for me because um, after the last couple of years having um, a lot to do with and learning about his life, uh, Pierre Giorgio was a man who was just like me and, me and you and um, I think what I appreciate about him is that socially he was the most, just one of the guys everyone liked to be like. If it was relating to us, he'd be like the guy in the first 15 rugby team or the first 11 cricket team. He would have been the guy at the parties that everyone would have liked to hang out with. Um, but at the heart of it all, he was dedicated to his faith. And I think I have a lot of respect for people who have everything in life but still have God as number one. I think it's pretty easy if you've got nothing to turn to God as a last resort. But someone like Pierre Giorgio had everything and um, God was still number one in his life. And um, I think just coming before him and being close to him at his tomb, um, just being able to put forth my my thoughts and uh, but also to uh, my future and ask for his prayers to help guide me and, and also help guide Prasadi Australia and all we do so that we may fulfil God's will as such. So that's what was going on in my head during that time. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. And also just praying for all my family and, and friends as well. I was sitting in the chapel we celebrated and I was directly looking across from where the shroud is um, so I was intensely conscious at the moment of um, particularly the moment of consecration that Christ became present to us there and we had just a little way on the other side of the cathedral the, uh, the body, the, his, the, the cloth rather, his body was wrapped in the, like the instruments of, the to of his torture and passion and we were celebrating his resurrection so that was really amazing and then just a little further down the cathedral was um, the body of Pier Giorgio. So that was um, a very interesting and, and fulfilling experience, but also it was a wonderful experience of the universality of the church, that even though my Italian, Italian isn't very good, that I could pray along with the priest and with the community gathered there. And uh, I must say that I didn't realize that the uh, uh, I think it was Don Giovanni, the priest, was going to ask me to actually say part of the Eucharistic prayer in Italian. So <laughs> when the time came, I really had to think on my feet, so to speak, and I'm sure I said the name of the Archbishop incorrectly. So um, I hope he forgives me. I'd say if you ever get an, an opportunity to um, go on a pilgrimage or just to you know, experience your faith in a, in a different way, um, you've got such rich tradition and, and culture in the, in the Catholic faith, and any opportunity you can to um, you know, participate more fully in the in the life of the church, or to to know a saint, or to visit a holy place, or really take that opportunity because it's um, it's special and it's something that can help you grow in your faith. And um, yeah, I'm really going to treasure this moment. I, I still feel like, even though I'm outside now, I think it's something I'll still reflect on over the next few days and weeks that I'm here in here in Italy and. Yeah, take take that time to really just to soak it in and uh, yeah see what God's got in got in store.